All right, guys, so the big days here. We're going to begin switching over from the JD1050 dual control hydraulic for the bucket to the joystick. Today is um, Saturday, August 23rd. My God, it's getting ready to rain. It's going to rain all day and all day tomorrow. I thought this would be a perfect time. I relocated my horses. I don't need the tractor here for them, you know, a couple of times a week to feed them and clean up and so on. So things are winding down. Most of my projects are done, so this is on the list. So I started by taking off the fender. You're, you're going to want to do that. It gives you a lot more room. Um, 11 sixteenths, three bolts. I hope you guys can see. I thought the best place to put the camera would be overhead. So I really hope that works out. Anyway, three bolts, two on the inside of the fender, one on the outside, 11 sixteenths. Undo your electrical for your lights. Basically, they just plug off, unplug, pull apart. Once I got that off, just in case this turns into a catastrophe, I marked my lines so I can put them back on the original where they came from and I don't have to worry about anything. Obviously, move your levers around, get rid of any pressure that might be on here before you start pulling off hydraulic lines. You don't want that to spray you. And we'll start by pulling these off. I'm gonna put them someplace where they're not gonna get dirty. Yeah, we're wearing rubber gloves today. Trying to stay somewhat clean. Now I need to take off this fitting and this fitting, which I believe are seven eighths of an inch. Yeah, boy, this is tight fit to get tools in there, that is. And I don't have seven eighths stubby, I know that. So this video is not going to be the entire process, but there will be one, maybe two videos to follow this to finish it up. And there'll be nothing like, and I do apologize for the huge delay. I know I promised, but had so much going on that it, it wasn't even funny. Had to finish the decks, had a family reunion that I hosted. The workshop needed some work. The horse pasture had to build another chicken coop. I moved them guys. So now, Kind of making time to get this done. I'm kind of excited, honestly. I'd love to get rid of this dual stick. I'm pretty sure this is one of the reasons why my uh, bucket action is a little bit slow. If you saw the other videos where I changed that filter, it, that is absolutely working 5,000 times better than having an actual filter on there. I'm extremely happy with that. All right, so we got that off. This will be able to pull when we get the, uh, the control off. So on this one, there's a bolt and nut on this bracket, 7 sixteenths. And I'm telling you, things can get a little tight here. And I have a universal on, not really for this one, but for the bottom one. I 
I'd like to give a shout out to my buddy, John, down in the Carolinas. I hope you're safe with all the storms passing through. He um, and I have been in contact here and there. He sent me some pictures. He's actually done the same exact modification. And he sent me some pictures of hookups and the way he mounted it and so forth. So I do appreciate that, John. He actually made a bracket to mount the new one. And I no longer have that capability to bend metal. So I'm going to try to reuse the one that came on the machine, or I'm going to have to come up with another plan. Then we'll do this quick connect, get that unhooked. On the bottom of this bracket, is the pivot bolt. You probably can't see it, but what I'm going to do is take the bracket off of the machine and then I'll take that bolt off because I won't need that, the pivot that is. I'm pretty sure these are going to be half inch and they are. I don't know. Alright, nice. And there's two of these bolts. There we go. Put these away because losing the specialized length really is a nightmare to try and match back up. All right, so there's the old one off. Yeah, prepare to lose some fluid. And uh, I'm gonna pull this apart. And like I said, I'm going to try to reuse this, this original bracket. The only thing I have to be careful about since the fender is off is that I don't have it so far over that I can't get the fender back on. So there'll be a little bit of figuring out here. So let me go get this pulled off and we'll see where we're at. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so as I said, I don't have the ability to bend metal anymore, so I'm going to really try to use the bracket that came with the JD. And this pivot is welded on here, like this. So what I did is I, I cut this off, and it's only tack welded here and here. And I know I should paint this, but I'll be dead before this rusts through. I cut it off so that I could reuse it if I have to. I put the new controller on the bracket, keeping it as high and inboard as possible. Mark the holes and drill them out. It kind of moves things away from the existing lines, but unfortunately for me anyway, it is what it is. When I worked for the fire truck company, I could have taken this stuff to work. I could have cut it, bent it, and been good to go. Unfortunately, I don't have that luxury anymore, so I have to use what I've got. So we're going to put this back on. Long bolt in the bottom. Half inch cap. And I always intended on replacing the controller handle anyway. So, where this is going to wind up, it's going to be kind of low and back, but it's okay. Because as I said, I'm going to replace that anyway. These we're going to make really tight. They've got a lock washer on it, so there should be no issue with it vibrating loose. 5 16 bolts will fit through the new controller. So that's what I drilled this plate out to fit. 
and they were a bit short, the original bolts. So I had to get two new ones. About a half inch too short. Put a lock washer on them. And you know, there's a lot of controversy about lock washers, whether the serrated ones are the way to go. People say lock washers don't do anything. But coming from the automotive industry, they use a lot of lock washers. And they seem to work pretty well. And clearance is an issue here. All right, so my bad. The bolt that goes through the bottom on this side is going to need to be at least an inch longer because that boss is thicker than the one over here. So anyway, flipping this original bracket around backwards, drilling your new holes so that it'll fit, it actually has the clearance. I set the fender on just to make sure that I would have enough room here and I've got plenty. And again, a shout out to John, thank you. Because you don't have to use this port, you can use this port. And you can use this front port for this bottom port as well. They're both fed from the same hydraulic. And if you find yourself in a situation where you need more room here, yeah, use this port. And if this one's easier, down here, use that one instead of the one on the side. Definitely going to remake the handle. With the seat down, it, it's just in an awkward spot. So we're definitely going to remake that. But we're off and running. The, the new valve is, is mounted. And now it's just a matter of getting all the hydraulics, you know, plumbed to where they need to be. So that will be in the next video. But it won't be that far off because the tractor is dead where it sits right now. Obviously, I can't start it with all these open lines. We'll, uh, we'll be doing that video even possibly tomorrow. I bought in excess hydraulic hoses and fittings and things of that nature, so I didn't have to run around looking for stuff. Hopefully I've got everything that I need and I can get this thing set up and going. But um, yeah, again, sorry guys for the delay in this project, but we're gonna be done soon. You guys enjoy your Saturday and hopefully we'll talk tomorrow. Take care now.